But and then I'll say, hey, hi, hello, welcome back, Alexandrian Codex. We're uh, doing another one of those. You know, I should have named this at this point. This is like the fourth video in this series. Um, this is another Dawn of Victory Diplomacy little interview bit. And today I'm, I'm meeting and interviewing with, with Nami. Nami is one of our server moderators and is the player or the strategist nominated for the common turn faction uh say hi nami greetings um so yeah just just some basic stuff to get out of the way who what what's your what's your name preferred name to be called pronouns title etc um i'm nami uh -huh. um, that's what i go by sometimes nomnito but that's mm -hmm. kind of old I go by the Adam pronouns, um, but I'm not that specific about those. Um, yeah, you're less prickly about it than I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, each to their own. Oh, oh, oh. So, I am, as already stated, a moderator for uh, Dawn of Victory. Mm -hmm. uh, got into like this, I guess, late as an addition uh, in the grand thing uh but i'm one of the like first ones for the server specifically um i i guess in the context of like this has been a thing since 2006 you're late to the party but in the uh and, dov revamp you've been here since january well since the server started uh December? yeah so uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so january uh, yeah i think this year this year yeah, I don't so remember when the server went up. Um, so how did you how did you end up here? How did you find out about Dawn of Victory? So I've been um, a fan of the Temple Institute, like just the, mm -hmm. uh, well, the channel for well, quite a long time. Uh, honestly, had like during uh, had like a phase where I didn't watch them as actively anymore, and with. Um, a few like especially the incoming videos of like mm -hmm. uh where the institute gives their opinions um the those caught caught me and just then i saw dawn of victory and i was immediately intrigued and honestly slightly scared um, <laughs> about what this setting could be yeah and uh well you know in hindsight that was like the Kind of, hmm, how do I put, how do I put it? <clears throat> um, not hubris, but like, I was maybe ungranted confidence of, okay, somebody ne should head out there and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I have to be that somebody. Yeah. Uh, um, as you might hear from my accent, I am uh, German. <laughs> uh, and I'm quite interested in like German, European, uh, and overall like history, mm -hmm. and especially about how, well, the things that are that I think should be important to Dawn of Victory when it wants to depict ideology, and that yeah. requires a lot of yeah. care. Mm -hmm. And while I don't know if I'm, you know, a person that can. Uh, give the correct answers i at least think i can give the correct concerns yeah uh, that's how i yeah, ended I up here that's that's a great point i i think our reactions were very similar uh <laughs> when, when it was announced this um uh, excitement mixed with apprehension i i think that's been my prevailing attitude about donna victory since uh, not back in 2006 i i was not conscientious enough or mindful enough <laughs> when, I was, when I was a teenager, but as an adult, when I've talked about the project, it's something that I've been like, you know, we were pretty inelegant and some things definitely need to be done better. And seeing it brought up again, I'm like, I want to be in that room. I want to be a part of that conversation and discussion because there's a lot of things that I know could easily be mishandled and I, I want to do better this time. Right? Like, I, I I, think we can do better this time. <laughs> uh, I definitely agree with the, the sentiment of the, the Templin Institute videos where, where 
it's more opinion and it's more critique and analysis rather than just lore. Those are my favorites too. But I think that's probably entire, entirely unsurprising. Um, God, uh, okay, the role player. So uh, I think you have been positioned very well to appreciate what a roller coaster the the early days of the role play was and has been in this transition period uh what do you is there anything you'd like to share about the transition of the the role play into what it's becoming versus what it had been any perspectives i'm giving you a soapbox okay sure um <laughs> in in the beginning the, well a lot of things have to, you know, be tried out, and mm -hmm. the roleplay is one of them. Yeah. Uh, in a setting, as it currently exists, where a lot of things are mm, up for debate, in question, mm -hmm. no actual answers, mm -hmm. um, existing in that context is difficult. And yeah. the urge to, like, you know, just wing it immediately, especially for, like, text-based roleplay, is massive. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen that a lot, uh, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in the early times. Um, but I think, like, if you would draw the comparison to, uh, I don't know, I've read a bit about like the first RPG settings for other sci-fi universes, where oh, interesting. like the early days were like was first like, you know, essentially homebrew mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. the modern terms yeah. of like uh, that and. You had like universes where like two of the movies were out of, and that's about the knowledge. <laughs> and you did an RP in that universe, and it probably had comparable results. Yeah, and that is here, but in a more extreme case because we don't yeah. have two movies out. We have like two videos or three. That's and a, a few that's, text yeah. channels. That's a great perspective. That's that's a really good way to contextualize it because most games, most tabletop role playing games, role playing games, you play test privately <laughs> before before making it public, and we didn't do that. And usually, uh, it's it's a bit rough when it comes out, you know, in the second movie when there's still a third movie that comes out and retcons everything after the fact. Um, yeah, it's tricky. It's it's very tricky. It's a hard ask. Uh, what what Raven was asked to, to set up and officiate, what you were asked to <laughs> moderate and try to make sense of. Um, it it was chaotic, and things have simmered down now a lot because that initial excitement is is gone away, and we've taken a exhaustively methodical approach to how we've reimagined it and how how are you feeling about for the record nami can't see the other faction rooms anymore right now while the game goes on so <laughs> maybe you can't comment on this how do you feel about the level of engagement that we've gotten since introducing the faction representative roles and events like this so for context um I am not the faction lead. I am. Oh, I think I should say that uh, first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I represent the common turn faction, uh, mm -hmm. the Zarya sector. Um, I am not the faction representative. Uh, that is somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, absent for IRL reasons. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, in there, there has been um, a decent amount of engagement in like the RP stuff. Yeah. I've seen, like, especially in the public channels, the RP has gotten longer. Like, yeah, the, the, the you, you see like paragraphs, like full-on mm -hmm. paragraphs um, mm -hmm. of how to engage with this. Because when, and uh, I think this was something I talked about a lot uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. during the reramp itself. Um, not only is the universe still like in development, but having not the context, but also not a structure, mm -hmm. uh, makes it like 
makes it difficult for almost everyone. Yeah. Like it takes a well, almost training to then RP if yep. you if you don't yep. have any context. Yeah. Um and with a game as mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. or as complex as you want it, um <laughs> around uh the RP, mm -hmm. the RP choices like matter. And yeah. even if they would essentially matter as much as they would without the game uh, in the wider context, uh, people care immediately. Yeah, a lot. People get really, really invested quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, you know, for, I won't share details, of course, but uh, I, I've read like of people like, hey, yeah. Uh, Kind of, kind of, like I'm kind of devastated. I'm really happy about this development and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. no, we interesting. We've, yeah, people, people have had some um, strong emotional reactions, and hopefully, it's been in a way that it's still fun. Uh, I know, I know, maybe not for everyone. Maybe it was overwhelming, and. Uh, it certainly can be intense and feel like there's a lot of pressure on you. But at the end of the day, this is a game. And the stakes of this game are a leg up in the next game that we play. That's... <laughs> that's about it. So it's not, it's not a huge deal, but getting people that invested has been very, very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, if also a bit like... Uh oh, <laughs> some yeah. some of you need to take a take a breath. Just take a breath. Take a step away. It, it'll be okay. The um, unique thing is like, mm -hmm. or the unique pressure is like, making strategic decisions. Like people already get super invested into long form games. Yeah. Even if they are, you know, you know, if it's a five player thing, mm -hmm. but in this case, people, other people care about your strategic decisions <laughs> that are not even other players technically they're just yeah. other people that you represent and of course it's done through the layer of rp but mm -hmm. that is um i know of like very few games or events that do that mm -hmm. uh that is actually something you more see in what I would, I'll say, like IRL, like, yeah, that's that's not something most games tackle, like uh, like having people backseat or like offer commentary on decisions of their representatives that they can't do anything about, but they can start rallying about and starting stuff like, um, you know, in Zarya sector and the common turn sector, it's mostly been. Me and one other person occasionally, but mostly me being like, hey, 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 be more aggressive, be more aggressive, be more aggressive. But Liberty has like, I had started out slow in the Liberty sector, and I'm not going to say exactly what they've been uh, talking about and arguing about, but there's like three main lines of thought or rationale or strategies that are bouncing around generally. Kibo has been, Kibo is the spheres sector, so it's pretty small. There's just two, so it's been very cooperative. Uh, Edelweiss, the Axis sector, also pretty cooperative, but they've, um, you know, bounce ideas off of one another. I, I think there's three or four people active in Edelweiss right now. So it's it's been super interesting to, to watch and, you know, uh, poke the bear a little bit as far as, as far as, these recent terms have gone, but I, I guess we can just rush through, start popping through these different turns because I said 15 minutes. Yeah, we're almost at 15 minutes. Oh, normally my timing's worse than this. <laughs> um, so with this, uh, this starting board, mm -hmm. what were you thinking and why did you pick where you picked? So I was thinking of like getting into the most central position that might have not been an immediate pick for other people mm, mm -hmm. with it was 28 48 48 but it was a diagonal um, uh, oh yeah right. that was your original pick. initially initially yeah. i'll 
we'll get to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> um, so, and that uh, was my goal. Was like I was unsure if the map wrecked, but I assumed yeah. so. But I yeah. was not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to get like 55 and 56 available, mm -hmm. so I could go like wrap to the north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and also you know have maybe a talk about 25 as a choke point, uh, being just you know in that conversation. Yeah. Um, that was my initial. I... Then another person suggested. Mm-hmm. Um, 36, 48, 48. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, this V-shape. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I, uh, you know, I wasn't a faction leader, so I felt might as well listen to somebody and it's still <laughs> roughly in the same area. Yeah. Now, Alex, mm -hmm. what happened? Uh, what happened, what happened was the, the person who suggested 36, 38, 48 suggested the exact same plan that the Axis picked. So what happened was your initial idea, which I think was good, uh, got completely fucked and you got bounced completely out of there into 55, 56, 01. If you had stuck with 28, 38, 48, you would have kept 38. Meh, I'm not sure about 48. You would have been in a bad spot because the OTO would have had 27, 28, 29. Mm -hmm. they, you both would have been bounced out of 28. So you would have had 38. Would have been 48, 49, and probably 56. That would have been... Got 40. This yeah, would have been like... so hard for me to figure out. I think I would have given you 38, 48, 55 or 56, and then 27, 29... 41? Uh, but as we can look, things were really clustered and there was not in a the, lot of room to move people. In the, yeah. In this. Oh, right. I forgot that, yeah, the sphere was not in 42 the second time. Yeah, you could have. You could have been in 39, 38, 48, but like. Mm -hmm. Immediately out of the game. <laughs> immediately yeah. out of the game. <laughs> So this was actually probably what the best case scenario, except going like into the north. Because yeah. for some reason, like, okay, to me, the north seemed like such an obvious choice because yeah. it has multiple defendable positions that I thought, okay, that's going to be the crowded place. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I assume that every other faction had that exact thought. Yeah. Which ends it up here. Yeah, I I didn't weigh in on where you should pick. I pointedly said, I'm not participating in this conversation because I made the map and I know a lot of the people playing this are new and I would have too much information for you. I would have gone like 24, 1, 13 or 16. I would have gone really wide in the north, just hoping that I'll have somewhere to grow. This uh, this idea of having everything blocked together is really defensive, but if we've come to see, defensive can also just turn into a slow grinding loss instead of a, a quick one. <laughs> yeah, so how would... Okay. Yeah, and that was our starting position. Mm -hmm, I think... Mm -hmm. At that point, we, like, our PYs, the common term was very quiet, deliberately. Yes. Yeah. Like, two other factions, we just stayed st stay quiet. Mm -hmm. We saw that we had, like, the North, and that was the obvious choice. Yeah. The only thing was not going 48, so we had, which was contentious. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, and that's like, if... I played this, like, if you would replace all the factions mm -hmm. with, like, generic teams mm -hmm. immediately. Obvious mm -hmm. choice mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as this 
map exists with factions that have previously interacted with each other yeah and will continue to do so in the future there will be consequences yeah i think that long vision which is something i really do appreciate about your your approach here and your philosophy here that feels lost on many of the other players um but of course they're in more desperate positions right that scramble feels necessary just for survival so like f damn be the long-term consequences we have to do what we're doing now what's so interesting about about this first turn um was the axis were immediately panicking and were either going to attack the non-aligned or attack the common turn and they were not making any secret about it it was either we're attacking this way or we're attacking this way and the initial spirit was attacking <laughs> us the common turn um with the recognition that in the long run the oto and the common turn had growth potential that no one else could match and well we'll, we'll see how that played out <laughs> it is I'll maybe talk about it later, but it is mm -hmm. an interesting parallel to a lot of things. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's true. But also in universe, like yeah. in the station itself, these are the most popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so obvious moves. We moved to the north. I let the axis have forty-eight. Mm -hmm. It was in discussion, mm -hmm. and that was it. We moved there. My my proposition was to tell them, I think I'm the one that brought up 48 in the first place, saying, hey, give the Axis 48, but then move into it from 55 and support that move from 56. So, so you're actually not giving it to them and you're just having them waste a turn. Um, and you decided just to give it to them. I would say you could have still bounced that unit out by also attacking 48 from 55 not taking anything still making the moves to the north like you wanted to but also not actually giving them anything and then you could go into a, a second turn of diplomacy being like hey okay seems we had a miscommunication here you want to try it again and just um are you familiar with the the charlie brown football joke no 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 you wouldn't be so in um charlie brown is a little boy I forget the name of a little girl. The little girl is holding uh, a football, an American football, for Charlie Brown to kick. And he says, I don't trust you. You're going to pull it away at the last minute and I'm going to fall over. And she says, no, of course I'm not going to do that. And inevitably she does that. And it's an ongoing long run joke that Charlie Brown gets fooled into believing her every single time and always goes to kick and the ball is always pulled away. And I, it's it's a it's a newspaper comic. I don't know if there's like a larger moral story to it. If there is, I'm not really interested. But that was basically my idea with 48 was, okay, yeah, us taking it out, right? Maybe a little aggressive. But like, if we just keep offering it to them, <laughs> then denying them. We, we're just wasting their time. That's okay. That's okay. Um... But again, I was thinking very much in terms of this game and immediate strategic goals rather than long-term political strategic uh, goals like you're thinking. I um, Do you have any yeah. feelings about anybody else's moves going on here? Anybody else's moves? Yeah. Um, well, the Axel was aggressive on every front, um, yep. of course. Uh -huh. um, Immediately, it seemed that like auto textbook moves. Um, yeah. What else should I th should they have done? Um, perfect position does the right thing. Um, they could have forty one. <laughs> they could have immediately had forty one. They could have, um, but well, at that point, um, they would have had to know that the seer attacks the neutral so mm -hmm. and the independence. Yeah. Which. Those, actually, a few turns later, uh, turns 
extremely complicated and mm -hmm. it's uh, like you can really see the scramble for survival between the sphere the axis and the independence like, yeah immediately yeah we're yeah that's uh uh yeah just the mess this this move by the non-aligned started them off on such a bad footing um it's but it, I've the, I've talked about it every time we've gone through here, yeah. but it's so hard to not talk about because the it's so pivotal. The most interesting part, uh, part of that is actually that it was uh, choreographed, not choreographed, um, telegraphed by them. I knew from the Axis that they would do, that the Independents would do that move, which mm -hmm. if the Axis could tell me, they knew as well. And you can see that in this action. I, I feel like they told the Axis hey we want a ceasefire i've already submitted my order here's i'm moving into 34 but let's let's make a demilitarized zone and i think it was the axis uh, originally suggesting a dmz in 34 which then they attacked immediately so not much of a demilitarized zone <laughs> um yeah a lot going on a lot going on just a, a headache of the sphere, the axis, and the non-aligned just lying to each other constantly. The next turn, hey, we've moved a little. The axis is on our doorstep, which scares the hell out of me because they can hop into 56, take away one of our build points, and there's nothing to stop them here, which is why, again, I really didn't want them in 48. Um, the interesting thing here is actually, my thought was, okay, if mm -hmm. they do that, the auto and common turn will immediately kill the axis. That was what would have happened. Um, I was confident in, like, auto intervention mm. of, like, if, should that happen, because they would have, like, classic. Axis immediately aggressive towards two factions. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest, like, diplomacy to do uh, intervention now. Yeah. Um, and they would have still be fighting the non-aligned movement. Look, so Czechoslovakia was... was one thing, but you can't also have Poland. The... Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so that was my, like, I was not scared at any time. Mm -hmm. I, I was more anxious than you were with this uh, resolve. And then the, the orders that ended up happening here... Um, you held, you held, I, I don't, there's nothing you could have done with five here. It had to hold, uh, this moving into six, of course, this holding here. I would have either moved to 56, anticipating a stab so that they would have been bounced back or attacked 48 in case they did attack 56. So you were just trading points. I, again, I'm so much more aggressive in my playstyle, and I, I don't mean to communicate that you're wrong, because I don't think you are, just we play differently, <laughs> and I am a, I am kind of ruthless. Again, if these were generic factions, mm -hmm. my playstyle would look very, very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have the Axis getting pushed out here, um not protecting 45 big mistake and we have the sphere making a move here in 39 that's going to set them back in a way that is still ongoing now they could be on par with the common turn in terms of total number of um things held actually no they would have taken the lead here they would have like they would have surpassed us significantly and, and they instead would have they didn't. So I feel like maybe they didn't understand the rules about capturing things. Um, I think that was the case. Like, they yeah. thought, like, moving in once and the person who last, like, was there meant it was fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But oh, now well. you gotta hold it. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, golly. <laughs> Darn. Um, I almost made the same mistake. Yeah. I, I... I've corrected a lot of mistakes before they've happened in all of the channels i started out on the first turn like no i'm not gonna do this but increasingly i've been like hey as a reminder that doesn't work this way as a reminder like it, it's not fun to fail because you made mistakes it's fun to fail <laughs> because somebody was clever Fuck you over. yeah yeah um the non-aligned were in such a good 
place like they they retook their they losses. Had an extra, they had an extra position even like yeah. I'm just wanting to mention they, they have one more slot and that's mm -hmm. big. They had they started with an additional unit and they threw it away. They should have attacked 33 to 45 here, supported from 44, 34 to 46. This unit would have been cut off. Axis would have been capped at 3. They would have had to build at 36, and you would have had a 34 and a 45 and a 46. And you could have taken 35, taken 36, knocked the Axis out of the game. Easy. All And you could have even made a concession to the Sphere over here, like, okay, you know what? You can have... Uh, 32 or 43 one of the two we can do a 50 50 split you stay on this side of the map i'll stay on this side of the map and the deal could have worked but instead the were you were you aware of this axis complete batshit idea that came up this relocation which idea which one of them oh um, sorry uh no these this relocation idea was something that the Axis player came up with because they felt bad um, about the non-aligned movement kind of being pinned in and being attacked and being in a bad situation. Uh, the idea was that maybe we can roleplay the non-aligned picking up everything and moving up here, up to the north. And mm. that's a very rule-breaky for diplomacy, but... It's a role play. Sure, we can make that happen. I said in order to make that happen, the rest of turn one and turn two, all of you need to take nothing but hold actions. You can't do anything. Let so the spear, the spear, sure, yeah, we get stuff out of this. The axis, yeah, sure, we get something out of this. The non-aligned, no, you're sitting on one of my <laughs> my home systems i'm not taking this deal are you fucking kidding me i don't trust you and then attacking into 45 they could have gotten two out of this but um that's why the care uh, the uh player of the axis said that they felt so betrayed huh. um interesting idea i really applaud the creativity and there's some interesting parallels with uh forcibly oh. relocating peoples mm -hmm. but I, as a commenton player, I probably, like, because this was while I was half away and doing mm -hmm. my orders, I would have been so pissed if I, yeah. like, did the northing and then found out, oh, they relocated there. Okay, guess I will be the one to kill them. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Um, it, it really did put you in a shitty situation of, oh, okay, so it's my problem now. Uh, the, fine. Um... So, so bullet dodge for you, unfortunately for those three, this started just a, a big clusterfuck. Again, so there's this, there's a couple of things. This OTO move to 29 makes it look like they're reinforcing the north, and this is what they end up doing. But mm -hmm. during this following build phase, the sphere build in 52 just really doubling down on this L shape. They could leaving this wide open. Yeah. I mean, couldn't have like 28 moved to 25 and 29 would have been free? Yep. Move? Yep. Okay. I don't know why they were moving to 29 instead. Yeah. Look, <laughs> I, I feel like they were still learning how movement worked. Um, but it's right there. It's right there, and you're so committed to this front, you can't do anything. Meanwhile, you know, happy little common turn, just doing our thing. Mm -hmm. Um, was this the beginning of the week? This week? Yeah, this was the begin. No, we're on move three Tuesday. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so here's your orders. Surprise, surprise, right? I will say, Nami, in the future, if you're going to have two things hold and they're side they by side. They should support each other. Yeah. Yep. All right. You got it. <laughs> I, I, um, I, like, I knew that, but the axis could have, like, they could have only bounced. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, so I figured. I didn't care. I just wanted to make sure you knew that now. Um, just, just for future reference, OTO doing OTO things. I, again, this, what you said about 28 could move to 25. It sure could. 
I don't, this is a waste of a move here. 28 could have gone 25, 29 could have gone 40 to threaten both of these, even if you weren't wanting to take immediately. Maybe they are trying to set up a line of three units to go north to match our three. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, again, at this point, the Liberty chat wasn't particularly chatty. And I had to prod them to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so business as usual. Axis mm -hmm. actually held. It, it didn't even attack us. They actually left. At, yeah. And which was the good outcome. And I was surprised because mm -hmm. the Oto could have taken that then. Yep. Like they they thought they had a deal with us, which we could have betrayed mm -hmm. at any time. But mm -hmm. even if they didn't think we would betray them, the Oto could have just snuck in. Yep. So. Hmm. I, you know, really trying to show a lot of faith in the other players here. That we was a good th test on my end. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, boast, I'll boast about that. It was a good test on how they are acting. Because uh, that was like leaving a mind open just because mm -hmm. I told them to. Interest was interesting. This, um, this turn was, so the, the spear player failed to submit a move here. And if they hadn't, I'm reasonably sure they would have attacked 32 with two units, attacked 43 with two units, and the sphere would have, been, or the non-aligned movement would have been in much, much, much worse shape. Instead, what happens is this awkward unit death that doesn't give them anything and changes positioning. I, I don't feel like this was even a good move by the non-aligned. Um, aggressively. I've, honestly, I think 44 into 34 supported by 45 or 33 in order to actually get this DMZ you had talked about. But then 44 is adjacent to this. It, it's a mess. They have too many spaces and not enough units to cover them all. But they stab. And this is the second turn in a row where they've attacked successfully, so I think the Spear and the Axis go a little blind with rage at this point. And lose the perspective of you and the Oto just just sitting, Sh just waiting, chilling. just hanging out, mm -hmm. just hanging out, not, nothing to worry about. And um, this was yeah. the resolve of that. They moved out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh... I think this is where, like, we the first time I actually talked to the Oto, the very first time, uh, yep. I was quiet until then. Yeah. And, like, we talked and, like, decided, okay, uh, let's put this up. Let's make sure that we both, like, get um, that position. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. essentially, like, this is where the first path to victory um, was decided uh, for both Oto and Combat. Possible. Y the first possible yeah. path. This was the turn, even, already. Yeah, um, where there was a proposal to do a 50-50 split or a 40-40-20, and then <laughs> me coming Then I saying, found out that isn't possible. Hey, a 40-40-20 doesn't work. It's more like a 40-40-10. Like, you can have a third yeah. party win, but, like, they don't win by much. <laughs> yeah. And that was also when the non-aligned movement looked a lot better and a lot mm -hmm. better in a negotiating position. Uh, yeah. That's, we can look, we can look into the future, uh, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And that, that negotiating position collapses here, right? Like, yep. um, a lot happening. The Axis making a good move. I, okay. Not attacking 44. Mistake. Should have moved on 44 should have done this move here and they would have taken two spots if you trust that the sphere is doing what they say they're doing them attacking 53 means that that unit's pinned down if they're actually doing this move then these are pinned down so the axis could have taken two here and didn't and then they fucked up um they moving to 47 was a great move diplomatically going hey we're de-escalating three big powers you me 
uh, you know, Oto, Common Turn, Axis, think we can make this work. But then moving back into 48, strategic, uh, threatening 55 and 56 just by having the unit there, bad, man, bad. That's how you ruin a relationship. Should have gotten that the hell out of there and moved to 36. And, like, uh, not, not great. I don't have a lot to say about uh, your moves, our moves, because they're they're pretty they textbook. Are... Well, then, like going into the north, yeah. The only exception will come soon. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that has been heatedly discussed. There's two. There's two. Mm -hmm. um, the most recent move is the controversial one. Yeah. Ah. This is still a move where I'm like, we should take forty eight. We should we should just take forty eight. We need to move out 55 and 56 so we can buy units, because at this point, no infrastructure had been introduced. Uh, people were talking about a few ideas, and I said, eh, next next build turn, maybe. But I need to I need to think about how that's going to work. So at this point, you thought, okay, well, I need three open to buy three units, because I'm going to have three supplies, so I need to move these out of here. But I'm not going to give Alex what they want and attack. Uh, so it's fair. It's fair. And then the build phase. And well, this build looks phase. Nicer. Yeah, the the unit uh, landing zones changed quite a bit. We had the idea of landing zones, a system for upgrading from these extraction sites into landing zones, further specializations of landing zones. And to be honest, these game mechanics are not you could engage with them, OTO could engage with them, Axis and Sphere could have engaged with them. I say in the past tense, because if they didn't during this build phase, and surprise, surprise, they didn't, they're not gonna get a chance for a while or ever to engage with it. Um, so your thinking here was, was what? What uh? What was your okay. build so, rationale? Uh, me build. Well, I think did I build a refinery already, or was that this next turn. turn? That was this, this turn. turn. Uh, the so, build phase. Yeah. The axis came to me very concerned, mm -hmm. and fun funnily enough, the move I did does in no way threaten the axis more than their previous position. Yeah, it threatens the OTO. And it, yes. Um. And that's fine, because I knew I was in conversation with the OTO, and uh, they did not think um, that I would attack them. But I wanted to make sure that they didn't think that. So mm -hmm. I did a public statement. Like, <clears throat> Lydia Weber did a public statement <laughs> um, about, like, oh, being concerned about mm -hmm. what's happening in the Axis. They see her and independence. Like, oh no, the conflict is so bad. Something mm -hmm. has to be done about this. But yeah. we, of course, want to make this a mining place. So we build a refinery, which signaled our PYs that the common turn still was, you know, mining yeah. um, things. But it also gave the first avenue to, uh, well, moving towards other factions mm -hmm. uh, that was the time because this is now if you look in the north the time where the common turn has a major resource advantage yep um so every, any demands we make at this point become much more well well they have a but more backing behind them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, let's, um... let's see how we built yeah i was i I, before we look at the builds, I think us building one or two refineries, great. A refinery, uh, because it's a it's a homebrew thing. Um, what it does is it changes a value of a supply point from two one supply to two supply, and it's it's permanent. It changes hands if the territory changes hands. It just it's a straight up upgrade. It's very, very good. The landing zone or the spaceport would treat any two 
landing zones with spaceports as adjacent for purposes of movement, uh, so long as they're controlled or you have the consent of the controlling other party. Um, a fortification would always apply one additional support to any units defending in that province or that sector. And then upgrading to a landing zone means that an extraction site can be treated like a home supply center, i.e. it can build stuff. The sphere here had to build, build a unit. They had to build a unit. I think they should have built in 55 or 51. The Axis, though, could have built a refinery. They had four units, five supply. If they had built a refinery, it would have been a gamble, and that gamble would have been a diplomatic gamble. Like putting it in 35 or 36, being like, hey, we're also going to back down. We're just going to upgrade because you build one refinery this turn. Well, then you have two supply next turn. And then you build a refinery that time. You have three supply total, right? And if you're upgrading one, two, three, four, five in the long run total, you can go from five units capacity to 10 units capacity. It's a slow decision you have to make, but investing early pays off fast especially if nobody else does it. So the Axis financially fucked up here by not doing that. The OTO, likewise, has two very safe uh, refinery options, takes neither. You have three options. One of them's safe, but you want to build a unit there to keep pushing this way. So you take a, a risky option with, with this. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I think it's fine. And are we on move two now? Yeah, yeah, we're on move two. Move okay, two. yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, I'm not giving anything away, right? So this build setup is is what we had uh, day before yesterday. What's what's your read on what's going on at this point? Well, how do I put this? Um, <laughs> I was uh, at that point... Uh, mm -hmm. only focused on the north mm -hmm. uh, and what the stuff is doing and I knew, okay, this is the time uh, where Oto is setting up to attack the sphere so it is my time now to set up to attack the axis to mm -hmm. well yeah, I can talk about this because the attack on the sphere has already happened mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yes, this is what my thoughts were yeah, um, I... And I did another thing that visually to the axis, and I think none of the people, none of the players have played it promisingly before, including me. Mm -hmm. um, visually to the axis looked threatening, actually put me at more risk than them, uh, which is going to 47. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I was. <laughs> I wasn't happy about it. So the the moves that ended up happening. Um, oh oh, pointedly, I skipped something. The, the pirate. Yeah, the pirate. So the independent fell. A, their units exceeded their supply after this move. So in diplomacy, this unit, a unit of their choice, would have been destroyed. And I decided, no, fuck that. That's boring. Every unit in supply, they can keep. Those are the ones they're going to keep anyway. But I want to keep this unit on the board as an NPC faction that I can do some role-playing with to stir the pots <laughs> and make things worse. <laughs> so I've been, I've been doing that. And um, uh, truth be told, regardless of what happens, if the pirates do not control something at the end of... Um, this turn that we are deciding on today, they're gone. They're dead. They're out of here. They have one round to do stuff. So that's what's up with the pirates here. The first deal they made was with the non-aligned to be supported into 52. Then they also offered the spear, hey, support us into 43. Or, hey, Axis, support us into 44 and we'll be your buddy. We'll be your little buddy and you can make us into a nice little buffer state. 
but you can trust us as a buffer state and nobody fucking trusted the pirates um can't imagine why i this we'll look at our move here i did exactly what i promised i was going to do with the pirates this entire area is just a clusterfuck up north we're we're playing nice with the oto right we're playing we nice. Are playing extremely nice it is not only playing nice it is making concessions yep we could have easily taken 18 they could have done nothing we could have taken 20 and 18 here because 20 is moving to 21 we could have taken 20 yeah so made it so that yeah and 18 so then we would and have been adjacent to 21 here and so we could have attacked from 18 into 21 on the second move pushing them down into 24 making it so that we get one two and they get one but because you are are trying to cooperate you're clearly indicating okay this is the line we're gonna stop at we're not gonna push this vulnerable point i'm not even moving into 18 so we only have one unit next to each other <sighs> again but, generic factions none of these moves would have happened but this this, this nami this is unforgivable this is unforgivable um 49 I... should have gone 48 with support from 54 and 55 um no i was yeah. too late because i I was busy. Um, yeah. I, that's all I wrote, and I didn't want to do the access attacking move while I was not even close to my computer. I uh, know, but 54 to 48 supported from here. This moving here would have would secured have been, both of these and gotten this. Would have been the correct move, yes. And would have been defensible. Um, because the axis is is pushing in here on the non-aligned. Non-aligned completely failed to support any of these uh, 44 here is taking the hold action when it should be supporting 40 or 33 if they had if these two had been supporting each other this wouldn't have moved um 32 attacked 42 30 43 attacked 52 neither of them supporting anything i I feel like some miscommunication must have happened with this player here. Some misunderstanding of the pirate plan. Um, because 43 needed to support the attack into 52. And if they had, I, we would have taken it. I would have taken it with the pirate. They still would have lost 32. Uh, but hey, I, the pirates would have something. And, and that's what matters. And they would have been able to hold 33 but the spear finally finally gets stabbed by the oto here by oto i they fuck up their moves though this 29 to 41 is fine but it's not supported from 40 so it doesn't succeed but then they had 28 moving to 29 and of course it can't do that if 29 doesn't move forward so 40 moves forward, but then nothing moves in to fill in 40. Like, they could have done this exact same thing, except 28 goes 40. And it made sense that you're just pinning this unit, moving up, moving up, moving up. I'm... I'm a bit confused, but that's okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, your moves, I don't have to ask a lot of questions because they're, they're pretty straightforward. You're not trying anything too wacky. Yet? I have not attacked yet. Not once. Yeah. Yep, not once. Um, and this is where we started out uh, this morning. And where we are now, no one has submitted any move orders. And um, I'm just going to stop the stream here because nobody's watching. Nobody's watching, but still the VOD they could watch today. So uh, goodbye, Twitch. If you want the rest of this, we'll see you on YouTube. Right. Um, now, now it's just us, YouTube. Just you, me, and Nami. Um, so anything you talk about now will not be revealed until uh, the update tonight. Well, uh, 
I'm pretty sure uh, it's clear that, well, I, I talked about the auto talks, and it's clear uh -huh. that Otto and Comintern have talked. Otherwise, none of these moves would have made sense. Oh yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Hello, Axis players, if you're seeing this. Uh, <laughs> well, you we'll should have made a better this. deal. <laughs> you, you, um, you know, shouldn't have. Well, should have looked into stuff. Um, I made some mistakes in the south, uh, then, mm -hmm. but because I have a major, <laughs> I have a major economic advantage. Mm -hmm. These mistakes can be dealt with. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I would have been in a very problematic situation. But I have like two, four, six. Eight, oh, sorry. And sorry, we'll have sorry. ten. Like, so, econ-wise, I'm fine. I have not lost a single unit. Um, so we're very good. Mm -hmm. I also um, have the refinery. Um, so, just gonna, just gonna zoom in here. I think. I think this is what's happening. Right. Uh, this and then for you know, yes, and, and then. then you I, are supporting, I guess, supposedly. You, you will support. Um, yeah, and that's that's what's going to happen. And then uh, up up here, up top, we don't we don't really have any. There's nothing devious going on here, man. Nothing this, ha this nothing sucks. This sucks. It's boring. Stays, it's super boring. It's, You're not uh, even moving to 18, which like. It Dog, is all that even... does is solidify the border. I know it looks aggressive, but like you just move to 18 and it then you solidifies. go 14. So the thing is, yes, it would solidify the border, but yeah. actually, but actually, uh, for what's going to happen is that you, for that to look good, both factions need a stake in that line because mm -hmm. that will be the first line abandoned by troops. Um, and then only when that line is abandoned, and if Oto doesn't have 18, it's just the common turn making a commitment when yeah. they have 18, it's at least both making a minor commitment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, this is the time where we would get into parallels of like two economically much more major factions. Mm -hmm. uh, their primary concern being like on the world stage, essentially. And like deliberating on that, while all other factions in a weaker position are fighting for survival. Yeah. And it's just like these two, like in this context, like these two much more powerful forces. Yeah. Deciding about the fate of the others. So. Uh, and not wanting to risk, like neither mm -hmm. of these two factions currently wants to risk their like current safe position. They could take a gamble. Both of them can take a gamble, and uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it past the Oto right now to still take a gamble. Um, but that would mean a drawn-out conflict uh, bit for like all forces. <laughs> hey, and, I'm here for it. But and, like, <laughs> and the question is, what is? And now we're getting into the really interesting part mm -hmm. um, about. Dawn of Victory, like a question of Dawn of Victory at large. Um, mm -hmm. What is the price that we're willing to pay for absolute victory? Um, yeah. Yeah. And like, if it's not about survival, but purely about victory, mm -hmm. the decision making becomes much slower, much safer much more about like prestige mm -hmm. and um, making sure that n diplomatic relations are stay normalized. Yeah. Um, what is one rock worth? Like, can it pay uh, off the like irreparable costs of goodwill and trust? Goodwill. Yeah. yeah. And that is not a question in a real diplomacy game because nope. like all the backstabbing happens during the game and that's still a long-term thing 
but after the game, well, the board closes. Ah, yeah, or I, the map. I, I definitely, I think you're right. Actually, 45 here. You can't move. You can't move. You have to support this. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I. I think worst case scenario, we get bounced out of 36 because they anticipate that's where we're moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could go Echonut, and they can only anticipate one. Yeah, 35 would be very funny, um, because 35 uh, is much more vulnerable if you move in there. Uh, you're not going to hold that on move one of next round because they can support, they can support, they can support, but um, it... It would be funny. Uh, 35 or 36 are both more or less the same. It's a game of chicken, right? Which one are they going to guess that you're moving into? If I were them, if I were them, I'd assume that 48 is lost and I'd move back to 36. I'd assume that you were going to try to make a stab at one of these and I'd move up to 35. I'd assume that you're trying to move to one of these. So if you're, you're assuming that they're assuming that, then you go 46. <laughs> But I think I think that's getting a little too into it at that point. Yeah. I think you just take a 50-50 here. Yeah. Uh, well, not 50-50, because going Aconite... See, from an access... Like, if I thought about what would the access do, mm -hmm. um, like, if I went 36, my thought was, oh, I am defending 36. If mm -hmm. I would be going 35, my internal thought would be, oh, I'm conceding 36, even yeah. though it's a 50-50, but on the map, it just looks like that. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I'll go one of them. Uh, <laughs> I'll get the one of them. By the time it gets uploaded, uh, people will know what, yeah. which one I'm uh, going we're for. We're sure going to try. And hey, it doesn't affect you at all. I'm pretty sure... I'm torn. Let's, let's get... What's your... Put on your pirate hat, Nami. Help me make a decision here. Um, so they've attacked the sphere once, mm -hmm. and they they thought they would be supported, but weren't. Look, they also didn't really believe that they were going to be supported. Okay. Well, like they were lying, and they were being lied to. Like a pirate's not going to be like, how could you do that? Yeah. How could you lie well, to me? Then, then the thing is, there's, well, okay, I wanted to say the independent forces are getting, like, caught, like, lauded by two sides, mm -hmm. but the same case is the case for the Seer, as yep. the Oto is now moving in. Yep. Now, one of these factions didn't move once. Mm -hmm. The other only made, well, questionable moves, mm -hmm. but, uh, so... You can gamble on either a questionable move or not moving at all. Yeah. And uh, how willing is the OTL world to work with pirates as I... the one as the new oh, contender? You can't see this. I reached out in um, all of the all of the chats as the as the pirate PC with an offer today. Um, so not not in our sector because the common turn can't make a deal with Liberty. With Liberty, um, I, I'm going to have to go and deselect all of these. Um, with Liberty, what I said was support, support us into 52, basically. Just support a pirate move into 52. That's all you got to do. You don't have to move. Just help me help you weaken our mutual enemy. To the sphere, I said... Both you and the Axis support me moving into 43, because you can from 42 and 52, the Axis can from 33. I sent the exact same thing to the Axis. To the non-aligned, I said, don't do anything, just don't get in my way, I'm moving into 52. Because there's no way they'll support this move. They have to just support uh, 43 to 44. I yeah. think I think what I'm probably doing is attacking 55 because these are 52 uh, because these pirates 
have, prior to becoming pirates, were fighting the Sphere and were fighting the Axis. So if they could either fight their old friends or fight their old enemies, you probably fight your old enemies. I mean, unless the old friend... Well, depending on how messy the breakup was. But yeah. usually yes. But yeah. usually yes. Um, yeah. I think the well, chances of getting 43 are much higher, but... Um, also, the Oto, OTO didn't break a deal with the Pirates last turn, whereas everybody else did. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so it's like, like hey, new player. you're new. new. Player. Can I trust you? Here's the offer. And uh we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out, but I think I think the pirates are going after 52. That's going to be fun. And they're going to die. Because well, <laughs> I hope okay. I'll say it. A lot of the maneuvering I did with the axes was not because I wanted axes non aggression. It was actually to prolong that freeway conflict for as long as possible. So mm -hmm. trying to keep it as stalemate as possible for the yep. longest time. Yep. So that takes long enough for what happened to happen. Yep. And well, I don't want to say it worked because I didn't technically do anything, but well, everything went according to plan. Now that unit in 48 would otherwise be in 35 and the front that the Axis would have had would have been much more solid. Instead, it's spread out and that unit's vulnerable. Yeah. They could um, uh, have a solid defense in, in 36 and 46, but instead they have a unit they're going to lose and one or two supply they're going to lose. Yeah. And, uh, well... I, um, the common turn, and I personally, um, glad that the fascists are killing the non-aligned movement. Yeah. So I don't have to get my hands dirty. Yeah, uh, it's, myself, it's like... Because that would have been diplomatically more difficult than just kicking fascists in the I team. think the non-aligned movement rebranding themselves from the independence to the non-aligned movement was a bad political move on their part. Because the independence... Well, of course, everybody wants to appeal to independence, but the non-aligned. And the well... non-aligned is like, well, every it's actually the well, every super faction is going to take you out first and then get back to their uh, original conflict. Yeah, you're just before... you're free game you're just at a, that point. You're a liability. Yeah, like you're not you're not neutral and would potentially join me. You're neutral and would not join me. So you're just. You're just the problem. <laughs> it's uh, it's a microcosm. It's oh, you know I'm I think like every time I, I'm in this diplomacy, I think back about the law primer and about cold wars and cold wars and cold wars. Yeah, yeah. It, I you know I think this does that's... this really well, which is part of why I'm like we need to play diplomacy. This this yeah. is going to be such a good thing for the role play. I promise you. <laughs> Well, it's not diplomacy anymore. It's a whole new homebrew thing. Yeah, well, it's we... diplomacy plus, right? It's yeah, it's... it's following the core rules, but it's allowing some more interesting stuff to happen. That's true. And because yeah. people have been asking about like spaceships and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, calling the, the what? What are they called? Uh, stratagems? Oh yeah, <laughs> from Helldivers. Yeah. <laughs> um. I I have some ideas for, for what we'll do after this one because I, I think there is a general attitude that we're near the end here. Uh -huh. um, you don't seem intent on doing... Okay, look. I, I offered Nami a suggestion today. Is it a good move? No, but it's a fun move. Um, this attacks here. This attacks here. This moves here. We're assuming that you are still going to support 48, so we'll take that. Mm -hmm. Also stab you at the same time. Go ahead and take 20. Go ahead and move to 18. Move up to 15. Move up to 12. <laughs> and just go full, full everybody fighting everybody on every front. 
there's two reasons for this. One, it's dramatic. Two, it pulls heat off of the sphere and axis. And for the sake of the roleplay, would maybe make it more fun or hopeful for those players to bounce back if we want a forever war. But like, we don't want a forever war. So we're not doing this. We could, we could save you. We could save you, Axis and Sphere. We could do it very easily. I mean, I I can say this because I know the O2 got the same deal and uh, the rest doesn't care. We got a deal from the Axis technically. Oh yeah, um, I feel like you got a deal from like... the Axis every turn. Yes, it's, and it's, uh, well, they are very friendly and I didn't, and there was like a part of me that like wanted Lydia to just go to that uh, pal, pole, mm -hmm. and like, why are you so friendly? This is, this is not good. Like, I welcomed them being friendly because I thought they were being naive, but at this point, this would have been the latest where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. something is the plan here which I don't get and I yeah. don't like it yeah and uh, I and yeah I pointedly said in in the roleplay in the Zarya sector chat no deals with fascists if you do this it will be my character's sole mission in life to get you out of office to get both yeah. of you out of office no fucking red brown alliance we're not doing and, that and uh that's why, like, the deals have been not just not attacking each other for until, like, it's decided. And mm -hmm. the plan here is, well, it, the individual moves, of course, will change, but the larger course of action will only change if I decide to do Operation Unthinkable or they do, <laughs> or also does. Yeah, um, they, it, it, they can't. All they can they do can is try to well. take 15, right? That's it. That's it, all they can do. It's true. They no, can't. they can't. They could take 18. That's true. Okay, yeah, and we also have a refinery, which in the long term puts us an advantage, even though we have about this. Yeah. Yeah, we have, they, we're up one. Yeah. We are up one. Um, <laughs> that can so, quickly change to up five. Yeah. So, the, like, yeah. And uh, it's really the question of, like, how does an old, like, common turn, like, just wins look? <laughs> and, like, I mean, yeah, that's cool. Like, okay, even if you do RP, like rewards for that, and like next game rewards, that's cool. But uh, it it would basically be if it were a total victory. I think the next game is going to be. I'm not sure what system it would be using, but it would be involve like the mineral shipments from Syzygy back to the station and protecting those shipments from like pirates or stealing shipments from other factions if it's a total victory okay it's a it's a common turn ship <laughs> and and everybody yeah. else can play pirates and, and becomes a heist movie yeah um, um i i need yeah. to think about what system to use for that that or we'll just jump to the roots and and then uh, decide later I mean, yeah have it bounce. The Roots one is basically, all of this money is coming back to the station, so now we can afford to uh, refurbish the Roots. Refurbish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. well, golly, there's no authority down there, so uh, who's who's going to get what? What are your, your new spheres of control on the station going to look like? And, well, you have so much money, the, uh, the common turn can start with two units, or pick any spot on the map to start from or you know some other very significant uh yeah. gain well it you that can be done and but uh but in my mind and in my not in my in my like me pretending to be like a cold war era general mm -hmm. slash diplomat is like the prestige and like feeling of dictating a piece yeah can feel like more powerful than even winning a battle like dictating yeah. it yeah and that it's setting that precedent and setting the power dynamic of okay in reality the decision comes from Oto and Comintern mm -hmm. and the, these people make the decisions on the station yeah. and if you don't want that tough luck and that's like 
wanting to set that precedent as Lydia uh, is better <laughs> than just you know just winning an asteroid. It's like yeah. setting a precedent versus winning an asteroid. And I want I think, a precedent. I I think you could have. You could really have played the villain this entire time, like if you had agreed to the red brown alliance and push the OTO, you can still be the villain. I mean, hey, it's not out of the window. Push the OTO, pull a red brown alliance here and be like, you know what, buddy? Surprise, surprise. I'm not attacking you, though. I'm still moving to 56 because I don't fucking trust you and I'm going to bounce your move. Um then take everybody else out and, and then, then betray the axis yeah that yeah. could be done but the thing is i am still playing as lydia yeah i know and i know lydia has some history uh with well the axis specifically mm -hmm. and also the Koto, um yeah. and which makes her well, act the way she is. Um, yeah, and, and my character also has auto sympathies as much as, you know, a, a full fledged communist can. So, in roleplay, unless we get more people active in common turn, our, our sympathies are pretty hard to shake. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's not even like sympathy, it's the. Well, it is sympathy, but it's the like attitude of okay. This faction is the one you can reason with in in the like terms of a cold war. You can have yeah. temporary alliance. Like you can reason with these people. With the yeah. others, you can't reason, and that's mm -hmm. like the amount of sympathies. Yeah. But like these are reasonable people, and they have reasonable like, you know, even reasonable like leadership sometimes and you know the axis player has been trying so hard so hard, so hard to appear reasonable but it's just like it's no. the it you know it opens up the how do i put um actually like the philosophical question of like how like it's a fascist it yep. doesn't matter how nice they are yep and the common turn has a consensus. Yeah, the common turn is strictly anti-fascist. Stri yeah. <laughs> strictly ideologically anti-fascist. Like, um, it's it's probably torn on the idea of like if you can work with capitalists or like change the system from within, overwhelmingly the opinions probably no. So like the sphere or the OTO, maybe. The axis, never. 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 The only the only good fascist is a dead fascist, right? And, you know, I believe this IRL. Um, so there's a little projection going on, but like, nah, you could, you could, Axis could win over the sphere nice and easy. They've been buddy buddy all game. You could have made peace with the non aligned movement <laughs> instead of stabbing them the first turn. Mm -hmm. Um, and Oto, I think we're probably also open up to a deal if they had demonized the communists, just like history. You know, just like, it, it could have worked, and I expected, honestly, I expected a turtle and then like a 2v2 two and hope the sphere would stay out and maybe stab the Oto out of proximity, mm -hmm. but I was prepared to be on the defensive. And uh, yeah, the faction really didn't want to be an aggressor. Like that was the one consensus, and between like RP before, yeah. like the initial thing was like, okay, let's play nice. Um, we have to show that we can, mm -hmm. and uh, we because have so far. Diplomatically, now, you know, diplomatically, the common turn has the most to lose, and the axis has the least to lose. I mean, nobody really mm -hmm. trusts them, but like, and if we prove ourselves untrustworthy, they're never going to forget it. Yeah, and then you have like the everybody, like the mm -hmm. anti-fascist alliance can quickly shift in a red scare, yep. into a red scare. Yep, and that's the one thing that like, okay, yeah, we could win the asteroid, but. We can't be painted as a villain easily. Uh, easily. <laughs> if we get a total victory here, we have to get a total victory 
every time. other time. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. How? What's total victory worth? That's like again. Uh, yeah. And this isn't a total one. It's just a total one in one system. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the difference between the standard version of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can't go full uh, Nikita Khrushchev and and say we'll bury you to everyone. <laughs> it's not gonna. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna I mean, work. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, the, the the goal is, and even against the fascists, because Lydia is, if not an optimist, an idealist, as mm -hmm. she comes from there, so she doesn't actually want to kill fascist miners as much as they are fascist, so yeah. you don't get sent onto an asteroid mission if you're not The uh, The uh, pullback on, on like, no, these are just miners, you know, people fighting aren't dying, it's like, well, yeah, I wanted it to be a slow startup, but then Raven over-clarified something I was trying to keep ambiguous. Like, I'm okay with oh. people saying that people are dying because I'm keeping that ambiguous and I'd rather people do propaganda at one another than the station authorities step in and be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Well, so a quick victory can, like, it, it's the, like, overwhelming force once. Mm hmm. Hopefully it works. If not, well, we are still going to win. But. That's why I've been like I could have been immediately antagonistic, and in the long term I would have won. This is this is uh, how I know. This is how I know you're mm -hmm. not like a uh, a new communist. This this is how I know as a leftist you aren't like newly radicalized because newly radicalized leftists are very much about like when's the revolution gonna happen? When's the big thing gonna happen? You know we just have to do it big all at once and and we'll win and it'll be over. But people who are a bit more studied on history and political theory and reality, um, look, I can break uh, rule six here. I can get political. It's my channel. Um, in reality, it's a lot of small concessions and it's, you know, capitalism dies a death of a thousand cuts. It doesn't die all at once spectacularly. The, the revolution is not some big fiery thing that happens and everybody claps it's it and it's work <laughs> it's just work <laughs> and it's it, it's either work or death and a lot mm -hmm. of death and yep. uh and then nothing's guaranteed uh, yeah uh, if like if it's so doing a lot of the setup work i would say and you know eliminating the fascist out of the equation makes a lot of things easier oh yeah um, so, like, and again, some people can be talked to, some not. So, some um, people, some factions. Some people you sit down at the table with, some people, uh, get the wall. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the axes are, uh, not the people you sit down at the table with. But, it's, it's going to be quick. Ideally, and painless. <laughs> it's going to be quick and painless. Just close your eyes. Just, just, close just, your just, eyes. Surren just surrender and like go. Just surrender hey. and go. Yeah. You can leave. You can leave. There, there's like, okay, we only have to kill like, what's one unit representing? Like people wise. I, you know, I would, I would imagine each one is like a hundred people. We only have to kill like, you know, <laughs> Units retreat at about like if you kill sixty of them, like about at least at the very least. Like if they're, you only have to kill like a portion of a unit. That's a few dozen. Oh and no! And their rest can survive. Oh and no! If if they're, if they are reasonable, which, yeah. You know, just, and it's some fascists, terrible mathematics here. It's the ter most terrible mathematics, and <laughs> this is just a game. Uh, but, um, and, uh, you know, if the fascists want to have the glorious last stand, um, the common they term can. can also provide. The, the common term can provide. Yeah, we can um, facilitate that. Yes. So, uh, would be sad. I would be genuinely sad. I didn't want that. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, the other, the other thing would be I'm even more prolonged war. 
we don't want it either, do we? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I've seen people be like, we thought this was like a, a dawn of victory, but the allies or the uh, the OTO and the common turn are turning this into World War II. Like, yeah, yeah, because World War II happened for logical reasons. It is. <laughs> the sides were pretty clear. Um, I, I'll accept. I'll accept uh, Oto uh, Landlis um, from Forty Eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and then we can talk, and well, you know, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Next time around, the Axis and the Sphere better better cooperate with uh, non aligned movement because any. If if you and Oto pull off not fucking each other over, that's going to be a lot of goodwill moving into next time and a lot of trust. Yeah, it's and that be... is a a scary alliance, especially if you both get a bonus next time. It is the well, that's the dynamic, right? It's the scariest mm -hmm. alliance. Um, mm -hmm. I almost feel like at some point, maybe not next game, but at some point, something has to happen to handicap us. Yeah, I think that'll probably be a Raven event or, that's... you know, something like that. Something totally out of my hands Yeah. because that's... I'm I'm trying to just give people a, a blank playing board and be like, hey, what happens here is your fault, not mine. This is your fault. This is your fault. This is your fault. None of this is my fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, you know. Uh, I commend every player of the like every player of the Axis mm -hmm. uh, and the Sphere, because uh, fascism is a loser ideology. Yep. So, yeah, um, like like playing those characters. Not only is it difficult because you can play difficult character like characters that are difficult to play off. I imagine it to be not fun. It is. Yeah. Like, you have to distance yourself from the character a lot, so it's an mm -hmm. interesting character exploration. I, uh, I know that, you know, a couple of people have been having adverse emotional experiences playing the Axis and the Sphere, and yeah, you're it, playing a losing position, you're playing an antisocial position where you're not going to be awarded accolade by your peers, you're going to be demonized and criticized and vilified and... Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's rough. It takes it more takes an how do I put it? More takes an author than an actor to play fascist characters. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, at least I would approach it that way. I could not do it as an act like how I play Lydia. Because Lydia yeah. is not me. Um no. for a lot of reasons. Um and even like what she thinks and she's a, Hmm. She's more an opportunist than I would call myself when it comes mm. to these things. Um, well, and she comes from, well, a background of... I kept this vague because it's not clear in Dawn of Victory itself yet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She comes from a background of being, like, denied her, like what she thought would have been like her path she was mm. like she comes from an access planet um she was first denied like her uh well you can say see from the name it's not weber with w it's with v e b r mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. uh which is retroactive uh um from after she left uh, legally and then like had like she d didn't get a part of her education and why that is depends on how the access will look in Dawn of Victory. I, I feel like you've been much more thoughtful with the character you made when I made um Good Kitten as a joke. <laughs> okay. I, I made Good Kitten as a joke number one because people were joking about cat girls and cat boys and I'm like all right, yeah, sure. There, mm, okay, and it was passive aggressive. There was a cat girl esque character in the roleplay that 
um, the way that the player dominated every scene that they were in was really heavy handed and it wasn't well written and they wanted to be the center of attention. I'm not saying names here, but you know exactly who I'm talking I about. I know who. Um, um, and I feel like a lot of people will put two and two together, but the intention wasn't just to be shitty and upstage. The intention was to demonstrate how you can be the center of attention, but also use that to highlight the other characters around you, to lift up the players around you, to give them spotlights and share that spotlight by coming strong and then use that momentum to help lift other people up. It was it was supposed to be <laughs> just a fun little quirky teachable character. And, uh, not anymore. Uh, and and Lydia is like the like lifting the RP events of other like RP stuff of other people up from the other direction. Like like mm -hmm. she forces people to talk. She forces people to like into positions and uh, original. She also has the problem of, okay, she got, she is not unfamiliar with politics, um, mm -hmm. but she has a history as a, how do I put this? She, not, yeah, kind of a partisan um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in not the politically divisive, but the, well, Politically divisive, yes, but but the French, the French word, the French way, yeah, uh, the French way. I uh, and but in a technically non-violent way until no, until she wasn't anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, then got herself out of that life. Like mm -hmm. she got uh, first got out of misery in the axis for. Either her some part of her identity, or just because her social credit sucked. Yeah. Uh, either the, one of those, or maybe a combo. Who knows? The, uh, the first scene with with both of our characters was yours nervously interviewing mine, and mine just destroying destroying her <laughs> with like, I have public relations training and i have been interviewed for the last like 20 years of my life i'm gonna turn this interview into what i want it to be yeah and, like, i'm sorry yeah. nami <laughs> no it is it, it was it's fun because she come does not come from a journalism world she inherited that mm -hmm. that she inherited the company she well she doesn't own it she, the, well that depends on how Alpha Centauri laws work, because it's <laughs> technically... But she is just the face, because mm -hmm. the other people were not talkers at all. And like comms, like there were technicians, and it's a bunch mm -hmm. of technicians. And the most social technician got picked to actually do the voiceovers yeah. uh, for what was happening in the access or around I, that space yeah and she's I, uh, not a journalist she just picked that up i hope next time we do something like this you don't have to be, be the strategist i think you've been very effective in that role but i would love lydia to be in a position where the news articles and updates are something that you could co-write um mm -hmm. in order for it to not be so clear that it has one author you know i have a pretty consistent authorial tone with mm -hmm. how i'm writing these because i'm just trying to get them out quickly and people keep pointing out mistakes i'm like brother i'm getting these done at midnight every night my time yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be mistakes i don't know your moves until like 8 p.m most nights because you fucks take your sweet time turning in your turns mm -hmm. i'm tired making these yeah, well, that that is, it's interesting, because Lydia essentially was pressed into her former life again, mm -hmm. of like fucking over access mining operations, mm -hmm. just this time, not with a crew of a dozen, dozen, but with you know, hundreds going on thousands. Yeah. Yes, and that is like technically it's the same thing, but it's a lot more pressure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the interesting part. Um, I, 
I really hope that we give this some time to breathe after it's over for the uh, the effects and the ramifications to. We have to. I yeah. I I mean that's what that's it's going to be like Lydia unwinding, crying, shaking, uh, to to like the actual faction leader. Yeah. Uh, after she won, technically, uh, mm -hmm. like it's the uh, like. I have blood on my hands. <laughs> well. That isn't complicated. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's actually very complicated because like her act, like she, Lydia never killed anybody, mm -hmm. but ha she has like multiple times, like she was responsible for quite a lot of deaths technically. Uh, <laughs> technically, by yes, by like. <laughs> Knowing, okay, if I do this, these people will get punished or die or they will be ambushed because their location is known because I revealed their positions mm -hmm. and this will mean they are going to die because of my actions. I I do have one question that I think we can wrap up with. Yeah, let's go. We supposedly, today or tomorrow, should have a faction leader meeting. Now... I haven't seen anything from Raven publicly calling or reminding folks, but I yeah. believe that's still happening. Do you do you have anything that you're wanting to bring up there? How do you think the uh, the roleplay will impact that? How the uh, the like event? The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The event. Yeah. Um, it's going to like the first meeting was already tense. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a, it was the axis playing nice, and I hope. Well, it's going to be exactly in that time slot where the axis facade breaks down because they're in battle, um, and I want to see the true face of Mister Jaeger. Yeah. Why am I saying it in the English way? Anyway, Harry. Um, <laughs> yeah, weird for the German <laughs> person it, to be using English. I do that all the time. To like, as soon as I speak English, I use English pronunciations for German things. I, um, I yeah. I want to see that facade break, or mm -hmm. I want to be feel really bad because it's just a doctor that got conscripted under fascism. I, I think you're just gonna feel bad. I think Paul's and, just a doctor, <laughs> and that's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> well. Okay, that's maybe for another time, but mm. that's a whole conversation about mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people press. Okay, um, I have a bill that I could propose that mm -hmm. is not related to the RP, so I might wait for it uh, yeah. for the event. So uh, wait for it so I can make, um, you know, plan it out better. Um, yeah. Auto comment on relations should stay as strong as they were before. Yeah. Um, that goodwill. Ha Ideally, will not shift. How do you think that sphere reparations bill is gonna go? You know, the independence might be moved <laughs> to vote for it. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they might be a bit more motivated to go. Hey, you know what? Fuck these guys. They you were know, bad. You know, maybe the independence will be moved. The Oto might have reasons. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, the access can, uh, you know. Be, no, what? this is collective punishment, even though that's not what that is. The, no, it's, no. Listen, you know. Taxes are collective punishment, uh, you know except when we do it. I know technically not fashion, fas complicated, but the mm -hmm. anecdote of, like, the German, uh, well, Kaiserreich uh, complaining about shotguns. Mm-hmm. After they use chemical weapons, <laughs> that's that's my opinion on uh, Axis crying on uh, about collective punishment. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good I, read. That's yeah, like woohoo! Shouldn't have used uh, mustard gas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how this turn goes. Uh, there's a lot of big moves that can happen. It's a terrifying position for the non-aligned to be in because they might be out of the game. Sphere mm -hmm. are on their way out. Axis could very well be on their way out. It's it's their game to lose. Listen, the non-aligned, if you're, if you're listening and you're still alive after this turn, um, I said that I want you dead. It's just because it would make the peace agreement easier, not because I actually want you dead. Yeah. Okay? Uh, I think, think Oto feels the same way, just like, hey bud, like, sucks to be in your position. If, if you're fine with just staying on the board while having 19.4%, which exactly doesn't give you a bonus, we're cool. I think you get a minor bonus. You just don't get a you get a slight bonus, not a minor bonus. You get the nope. smallest one. No? Uh, nope. You Seven. don't get any. Seven's the no no. No. Hold on. Uh rules. Don Victory uh, roleplay like, rules. We get so the thing is forty and forty. Oh, wrong right? rules. Um I I know that three factions can get bonai. But one of, like, two of the factions can't get the big one, and the last one, see? It'd be a fourth, Four. oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. It would be a... Mm. It wouldn't be any victory, but I still hope that staying on the board at least means something. Uh, yeah. Like if, all, if two factions are wiped out, one uh, is alive, and the other two get a minor victory. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. I think next time maybe I need to to change these so it's harder to get a single victory or a solo victory easier. For, no, no, because then people just peace out super early. This is harsh, but it's I mean, good that it's harsh. It's good that it's harsh. I assumed it was specifically designed to be as harsh as possible. Yeah, because people were joking about, what if we just all call ceasefire immediately? I'm like, you can do that. It would just be boring to play through mining simulator and moving and do like... Do you know how many people play, like, satisfactory? Yeah, but, like, there's not even fun mechanics here. It's just Shush. moving single pieces on a board. Shush. I mean, hey, hey, we could uh, have a satisfactory uh, server set up so people could do that, yeah. When they won't point. Okay. But yeah. Um, I hope Non Aligned stays alive for longer. Um, <laughs> good luck. Vote for our reparations poll. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're bailing you out at the latest possible moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nami, thank you for, for finding the time um, and interviewing with me today. I mean, we talk pretty frequently, but it's, it's fun to find an excuse to make content. Always glad to be content. <laughs> um, as far as further interviews will go, I'm thinking of only doing them on build turns or um, right before build turns like this. So maybe another one this weekend. Maybe not. I think with the rest of the factions, I'd prefer to just get everybody in at once, once this is over. Because uh, it looks like we're near the end. Oh, I'm Rath very... Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm very excited for an after show, uh, me, uh, like interview after yeah. the event. Yeah. That, and that's when I will get into the ethics of killing fascists. <laughs> 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 or actually, no, like people that serve fascism, even mm -hmm. if pressed into it. Mm -hmm. because yeah. That is, yeah. That, that's where that's going to be. Two hours of fun. <laughs> Just a whole can of worm. Welcome to our leftist podcast. Um, <laughs> there will probably be more of this up soon. I can't say as to when, but until then, I'm, I'm going to say toodaloo. Take care. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>